This is quite basic for me. I see the tobacco and vape spill as an opportunity to change the life chances and the life course of thousands of children in the Stroud district and my two little girls in that mix. It is not perfect, but it enhances the chance for their little lungs and healthy bodies to grow up to be strong adults. And like many, I am intuitively against banning things and state interventions. I have concerns about the implementation, the practicalities and the enforcement, but I am less interested in hearing slagging off colleagues to help sell books and more interested in the really spirited debate that we have had and challenges from right honourable members like Norwich North because I think the amendments that could potentially come and the debates that are coming on this will help us. Because at the heart of this legislation is this great parliament using the knowledge and evidence that has built up over decades and decades that tobacco causes harm. When we know that smoking cigarettes is addictive, it's expensive and it limits life chances, particularly of the poorest, why would you accept the status quo and hope for a natural evolution? When we know that smoking impacts life opportunities and youngsters are still smoking despite everything that we have done so far and those awful pictures on the boxes. When we know all of that, why would we not want to do more? And secondly, to the health of the nation, the NHS clearly needs reform. I know politicians get shot down in flames for that, but that is the reality. The combination of an ageing population and the billions provided in taxpayers' cash year after year, never ever being enough, mean that serious change is required. So notwithstanding my concerns about this legislation, I do view this bill and the measures to be part of a genuinely bold and preventative strategy that we have not seen before. This is also from a Prime Minister who is known to be characteristically thoughtful into the detail, into the data, into the evidence. So I applaud the PM for being willing to take a battering on this, yeah, yeah. to try and do the right thing and yeah. to prevent known harms for children and for young people's futures. Yeah. Children in Stroud and Gloucestershire and beyond will benefit from this bill as they are growing up. Now, all six Gloucestershire MPs have the absolute joy and benefit of meeting with our health experts on a regular basis. Now, they give us a hard time, we give them a hard time. They're very rarely really happy with the government on all bases, but they told us that this policy is one of the most important public health interventions that any government can make. They then wrote to us to say that the health, health, health experts wholeheartedly support the plan to create a smoke-free generation. They said that the legislation is needed and proportionate. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable ill health and death and the major driver of differences between the rich and the poor. In Gloucestershire, the smoking prevalence of the most deprived quintile of the county is 22% and as many as over 30% of those in routine and manual employment 25,000 people in our little county. Furthermore, smoking is the leading cause of the 10 to 20 year reduction in life expectancy in people with serious mental health illness, of whom 38% of those in our county are addicted to tobacco. Now, progression towards a smoke-free future, the doctors say, will significantly improve the health and well-being of those currently in the most adverse circumstances, with nearly 26,000 people, uh, tobacco-dependent households in our county. And a note to the self-proclaimed freedom fighters, we all love freedom, but addicts are not free. They have very limited choices too. Two-thirds of those who try smoking will go on to continue to smoke for the rest of their lives. That was my bit, by the way, the Freedom Fighter. That was not our learned doctors. But the doctors did say that the legislation have the potential to avoid 4,653 hospital admissions and 690 premature deaths in Gloucestershire, which occur as a result of smoking. They said that while this is a novel policy, Madam Deputy Speaker, there is no reason to think it cannot be successfully implemented. And I do not accept that the UK cannot do this. 
The legislation will have a profound impact on society as transformative as smoke-free legislation did more than a decade ago. It is possible to conceive a future where smoking no longer addicts and kills thousands of people every year. I'd like to thank Dr Charlie Sharp, Deborah Lee, our former chief exec, Dr Richard Makins, Shima Raymond and Professor Mark Pietroni amongst many others that gave me the most structured and sensible part of my speech because they know, they see this stuff every day, my mum's a nurse, they see it. We can do this, let's not talk this parliament and this country down in terms of implementing tricky things and I'm looking forward to the next stages. Thank you.